say somebody's on the first date. What are some do's and don'ts on okay. first dates? Yeah, so I would say mistakes dudes make on the first date. I, I've seen it go in different directions, but I think in general, the mm-hmm. biggest mistake, a dude that's struggling to convert on dates, he's just not making it like a man to woman interaction. They hang out with the girl. They never make any kind of advances. There's no escalation. There's no flirtation. And no sexual tension. Is that what you mean when you say man to woman? Yeah. 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 I mean, I know what it meant. I was just trying to. Yeah. I, I read all the books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's like different degrees to it. Yeah. Right? So sexual intention is just me telling you, like, yo, what's up? I'm trying to fuck. Yo, man. What's right? up? What that, yo, what that mouth do, shorty? Right. That's but, not what you mean. Yeah. But I think most dudes that are really low confidence or to struggle with this shit, uh-huh. they're afraid to display that or go for that. Mm-hmm. And it's partially because they don't know the structure to build that up. So I think like in most dudes' mind, it's like, I'm either going to just go for it and she rejects me mm. or I don't want to come off as that guy, that thirsty guy. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to play it cool and has to have a nice, friendly conversation. So we just talk. And then after one, two, three dates, the girl's feeling friendly or if it even goes that far it might end yeah. up just being ghosts after one if it's if it's really bad but what i see consistently with clients is they're getting to second date maybe they get to the third date and then they get this text message like hey you're a really great guy yeah friends. you know i had an awesome time but i just don't feel the spark yeah and and dudes that think, happens a lot i think bro a good amount of dudes yeah all right I mean, or or they just get ghosted. Yeah. But if you're going on dates and you're not consistently having success, like I think to some degree that that inter that situation's happening. Uh, it's either ghosted, or sh- she goes on the second date, or you get that text. How do you prevent that? Okay, so if I were to break it down into a a very s- technical structure, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so I think what I tell guys is it starts the moment you you meet her, mm. the moment the date is starting before you even get. To the sit to the date uh-huh. upon her walking up, it's the, it's the vibe check, right? So what that means is like you got to bring in the right energy, mm. and so what I tell dudes is because again, dudes that are awkward, they're unconfident, or, or just make mistakes of like sitting down at the table. They just have the they have the girl sit down across the table, or they just wave to the girl, and it I don't know, it just kind of creates this weird dynamic off rip if you don't know how to turn up. So what I tell dudes is you see the girl, you walk in, big you know, nice smile, good eye contact. Give her a hug mm-hmm. and and off rip to say like, hey, what's up? What's going on? Wow, you look really cute tonight, by the nah. way. Like just off rip. Just mm-hmm. get it out there. And dudes, dudes, because here's the thing. They struggle to to drop that into the date. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the longer you're hanging out with the girl, the more friendly it is. There's this drum roll build up. Am I going to make a move? Am I going to kiss her? Does she like me? What's yeah. going on? You know, so if I break it down, it's like, well, dude. The moment you see her, understand she just cleared out two hours to get ready. Mm -hmm. She could have been with some other dude. She's she's here with you. So you can assume some level of attraction, some level of entitlement to to do that much, because I think that's an easy step. Most dudes just don't do. But don't some girls go on dates just for free for free shit? Well, we're talking about how to actually run a date properly. I would say if if that's the case, then you're probably you fucked up before before that. Okay, so we're assuming we're on a real date. Assuming you're on a real date. Yeah. Yeah, my advice biggest mistakes I see dudes making is like not doing enough escalation, mm. keeping it super friendly, waiting till the very very end of the day to try to make a move mm. and it's like so much time has gone by, it's gonna be a high pressured situation, yeah. she also, girls get turned on like a volume knob, you know mm. so the whole date is a volume knob turn up uh, not, not necessarily the date needs to end at 100% sometimes it'll it'll build up like, you know, halfway through, two two thirds of the way through, but like it's guys see the girl they're like yo she's bad i'm in yeah i want to do it right i'm now. about it yeah guys are the light switch girls are the volume not man uh, so if you don't turn up the volume in small chunks it's gonna feel unnatural it's gonna be harder for you to do it it starts from the moment you meet her mm. just set the tone and it's also easier for you to keep at, to keep being that guy if you already were that dude off rip and she yeah, accepts yeah, it yeah you know yeah, yeah. so going in off rip like that in my opinion, is like a crucial step. A couple other things. Any questions? No, no, no. A <laughs> uh, couple other things I would say is that using this philosophy, there needs to be consistent bursts of turning up that volume knob. Mm. And again, it's in small steps. Give me an example of a burst. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a verbal burst or a physical burst, right? 
um, physical would obviously be touching the girl. Verbal would be me talking to the girl. That's also the same reason I say start the date with the hug and the intent. Yeah, you, yeah. you got both off rip. I broke the touch barrier. Right. Okay. And I looked at dead eyes and said some, you know, little bit of flirty shit. Yeah. yeah so crazy. That's crazy. You didn't say that. Damn, man, them titties, them, them, them tits hit uh, right yet. Yeah. Want to bite you? When the clothes are coming yeah, right, off, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, but that's where it starts with the with the verbal and the physical. Because if you don't touch her or or you don't do the verbal, now I'm like, how am I gonna? Is it weird when I finally like reach across to touch her? Yeah. You know? Or is it weird when I tell her I like her? So that's why they get in their head, the conversation uh, flowing. So if you wait to the end, it's like super fucking weird. Yeah, it's can't, super strange. Can't. I mean, look, the thing is, a, a dude like you, you're so charismatic and you're no filter and you probably already just do this shit without realizing it. Because like you got the sex appeal, you got the vibe, you got the swag. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but a lot of these dudes don't have that. A lot of these dudes just don't have that shit though. Yeah. So I'm telling you like there's tactical steps you need to implement. Word. Otherwise it's not just like you got to manufacture. When the girl says, hey, I'm, I'm not feeling the spark. It's like, you, dude, you didn't create the fucking spark. You didn't create the spark. You know? Yeah. And so a couple other small bursts will, I think another thing is strategically planning out the date so that our positioning is getting closer mm. you know dudes run a three hour dinner date where she's sitting across a long ass oh. table the whole fucking time the whole date's there we ate she's car bloated three hours has gone by <laughs> neither of us is feeling sexy there's been no physical touch either now again it's kind of like positioning yourself to fail yeah. i think so what would the day look like if that if you if you can't just go yeah. to dinner what is what does it look like right so and and don't get me wrong you can go to a dinner and sit across the table from yeah. the girl and still make it work i do think honestly though the longer you're doing that the more of a disadvantage you're at mm -hmm. honestly so what i tell guys is like ideally a date assume let's just assume we got i don't know three hours okay I would say there should be multiple location changes through the day. Yo, I've been saying this shit for mad long. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, got, you know, you I'm mean, the whole I, philosophy. Yeah, like, I need you on the team, bro. No, no. <laughs> Get on the fucking team, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm a fitness business coach. Stu was doing that approach for the day at 17. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> it's five. It was five. five. Uh, <laughs> nice, bro. It was. Um, no wonder you're a fucking monster with it, yo. Oh, no, no, no. I got a girlfriend, man. No, my she got for I just you know? social confidence. Oh, yeah. Everything. <laughs> that's why you got the girl in the business, man. I got the girl. All right. Yeah, locations. Multiple locations, man. Yeah. What does yeah. it look like? Give me an example, man. Let's say. Yeah, the other, I don't like dinner in a movie. By the way, you no, the movie's the yeah. fucking worst. Yeah, how, like, how are you gonna connect like that? It's, it's, you know? it's just the worst. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would even say a big expensive movie has got to be your girlfriend, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, or at least like second, third date. We're yeah. already clicking. There's already all a vibe right, there, right. and we're still doing something else on that date. Yeah. I'm not meeting you at the fucking movie theater. We're sitting down. There's a there's a disconnect there. So you taking the chick to the paintball spot or <laughs> what are we doing? I don't like no. I wouldn't recommend Trampoline any crazy. Gym. I wouldn't recommend any crazy activity either. Like okay. I, I have clients that they take the girl to a helicopter, to like a Pilates or a hot yoga or a, a, a really intense hike, and that's just like not sexy either. I don't yeah. think you know like it it could maybe work, but like the more sweaty, the more full the girl is, the more dirty you guys are. The, it, it's hard yeah. to make a, a, a romantic, intimate yeah. connection that way. Yeah. Especially so, hot yoga. Get the yeah. Out of here. Yeah. So activities are good. Mm. Like, you know, light something light. You want to do a really light workout because you guys met at the gym? Cool. You want to go do mini golf or walk around some mini area sightseeing? Dope. Yeah. I like, actually, that that's cool because, like, you're forced to keep moving yeah. throughout the whole thing. So, th in my opinion, if you're... Again, you can sit down somewhere, but again, yeah, I think there needs to be a second location minimum. Second location minimum, because then you could also, even if the positioning's bad on the first place, yeah. which by the way, you should scope out the spot you're going to take her before you go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell dudes, wherever you live, like you should just have one set date structure. you got a first date structure mm -hmm. and you just practice that structure. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to get you to give them a structure, man. Like, so, okay. So like, I'm thinking... Helicopter ride. No, no, no. Okay, 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 man. okay. <laughs> look, look. Okay, if it was in Miami, we're gonna meet up in the downtown area. All right. We, we'll have a drink, maybe a little bit of finger food, and then we'll stay there probably for about an hour. Mm -hmm. right? And then if if we want, we could maybe move within the venue. That would be cool, depending on the setup. Some of these venues have like an upstairs, an outdoor section, a mm -hmm. couch area that's a little bit more intimate, mm -hmm. and then. From there, I would I would literally if I was in downtown Miami, I would just go for a walk through Brickle and okay. find a, have another spot plan where we could sit down for a little bit. 
and then have an actual second venue where we could go to. Uh, All okay. right, so that way there's like technically What's the second like, venue. We're like, what are we talking about? Like a depends lounge, on the depends on the bar. What are you talking about? I mean, all of that could work. Yeah, hookah bar is cool if that's like what you guys are into. I don't yeah. force dudes into any environment. Yeah, because some dudes don't like the dance for shit. Other guys yeah. like to dance. Yeah, I don't like to dance, man. Yeah, me neither. You know what I'm saying? Other we dudes know like that from other we know that like, from my pigmentation, but I don't like to dance. <laughs> <laughs> Dance, Boy, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, baby. You ready to dance? <laughs> but really what it comes down to is, man, is having something to take the girl to and leading. Take her on a va- on an adventure. A little bit. A yeah, little no little helicopters. Bit. Not, not a, no little helicopters. Yeah, All right. All right. Cool. Look, the more locations we're in, it strengthens the memory of you. Yeah. It, it keeps movement to the... It, I'm not sitting across the dinner table on some interview on some interview mode the whole time. Mm. You know? So we could, we could start there, but... Then there's a whole experience of us getting up together, walking down the street, talking about different shit, sitting down, getting a little bit closer there, going to another spot from there, possibly dancing, possibly playing some like some yeah. game. Or and she, ins- so, yeah. she ins- is- associates that all these good experiences with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. And if you think about it, like when it, it ties back to a lo- there's a lot of like philosophy around this, but like if you have one memory like since we've been here this whole yeah. time if you think back to when you met me yeah. like a, a year from now you're just gonna have this memory of me here right but if we actually same amount of time exactly. like let's say this podcast was like hypothetically yeah. three hours but instead we went here then we went to somewhere else then we went to somewhere else ended with the helicopter ride. ended with the helicopter because you now yeah. <laughs> the, the memory would be stronger and yeah. you would be in multiple locations feeling comfortable with each assuming yeah. it was a good emotional experience yeah. you have multiple locations with that person it develops a sense of trust safety security yeah, yeah. i bring it back to this analogy if you've ever met if you ever had like a school teacher that you were really close with in class and then you saw that old professor like at ShopRite or some shit like a year later. It's weird because you only saw it's it in that like, Mr. Johnson, what are you doing here? And and in the school classroom, he was cool. But hypothetically, take yeah. that same dude. If he brought the whole class on a field trip and they went over here, they went here, they went here. There's just more of a bond that's created when you're in multiple environments. And when you break things up, you remember, you remember them better, right? There's no reason for a yeah. hyphen to be in a right. phone number. The only reason is because it's easier to memorize. Hundred percent. Like yeah. it's like because you don't type the hyphen. Yeah. It's like it, it's not needed. But if you just said the number, yep. it would be weird and difficult to memorize. Yeah. Yeah. So the location changes. It just breaks to, it up. Just yeah. to break it down, it's like it's going to strengthen the memory. Mm-hmm. It's going to put you in a position of leading the girl multiple times, so she's consistently following you into more good emotional experiences mm. also uh there's just more to talk about when you're moving around different environments different vibes and also different positioning of seating which ties into the physical point because uh-huh. if by the second or third like if we were just stuck across the table the whole time mm. it's going to be really difficult or obvious if i'm trying to lean over and get closer to her but if we were there for and if, if we were if we were there for an hour and then we moved to a new spot and while we were walking there was a little bit of light touching there was a little bit of flirtatiousness yeah. then we go sit down on like a bench together yeah. and then by the third spot maybe we're at the hookah bar or some shit and we're at a couch and, and I'm it, next to her and it, that would actually make sense for me to actually touch her and she's comfortable with it because of the progressive desensitization too and if you're on the backseat of Ubers and shit or whatever you know what I'm yeah yeah exactly yeah. or you have backseat of Ubers or whatever or car, you know what I'm car's a, a whole location in itself that's a low it's like now you've been on seven places with this chick yeah you know what I'm saying yeah so that's on, having structure leading uh, different positionings in different environments while again slowly turning up the volume knob physically right mm-hmm. so initially it's just a light hug in the in the first 30 minutes there could be a little bit of light touching maybe some playful push away or like you know it's just light touch and then from from there to like hour one, hour two, we're getting a little bit more closer. We've connected more. There's been a little bit of flirtatiousness. She's more comfortable with my touch. Ideally, she's even comfortable to the point where she's touching me a little bit too. You yeah. know, so you got to be able to read the body language. There's a lot that goes into it, obviously. But in terms of date structure, I think that those are like great practical steps of like starting it off with some physical and verbal not just sitting across the whole time keeping it moving injecting one two statements of intent kind of making it flirty while teasing yeah. you know and then progressively getting a little bit more touchy and positioning yourself closer as you move through different environments yeah 
And that could end, that could put you in a position to be in a really good spot after like two or three hours. If the vibe's building up, the girl's comfortable with your mm -hmm. touch, we're sitting closer, we're getting more, I mean, look, the closer you are talking to somebody, the more intimate it, it feels naturally. It's just about getting her comfortable at that distance. So by breaking it down like that, that's how you get that smooth volume knob turn up. I like it, I like yeah. it.